Hello, I'm Richard Bertinet and welcome to my kitchen. Today you're in for a treat. Well, actually, you're going to treat somebody else. I'm going to show you how to make um, something very special to treat your special one for Valentine. Actually, it's not just for Valentine. It's going to be any time of the year. So let's get on with it. Okay, so what I want to show you today is to make blini. It's a very classic black like, pancake for breakfast. It's delicious. It's made with buckwheat flour and uh, gluten-free flour. But you could use just plain flour, normal plain flour. The buckwheat really gives you that sourness into it, which is gorgeous with it. So, very simple. We've got some creme fraiche, some eggs, a bit of milk, a bit of salt in here, and i got some quick yeast in here. You can use fresh yeast also, but quick yeast is more convenient for this one. So the first thing I'm going to do, put my milk into a saucepan to warm up and gently warm the milk up. While this is going, I'm going to put my egg yolk and my creme fraiche together. Keep your egg white. We're going to whip the egg white later to make the batter even lighter. Beautiful eggs. So the milk is just getting nice and warm. You can see a bit of steam coming out. That's ready. I'm going to combine my flour, so the buckwheat and the gluten-free flour together, all of it. Just with your finger, that's fine. I put my salt with it now, and that's ready. So now, we're just gonna add the yeast into the milk. For this, I use a small whisk. The milk is nice and warm. Add your yeast straight to the milk, and give it a good stir. Then I'm going to stir my egg yolk and my creme fraiche together. Look at the color of this, delicious. So I use creme fraiche, you can use sour cream, even double cream if you want to. The sour cream and creme fraiche give you that little sourness, which is really typical of blinis. And then combine your milk with your egg and your cream. It's a beautiful color liquid there. And then we're going to add this to our flour. So put everything in there and stir the mixture very well. And that's all. And that's got to rest now. A good hour is fine. If you're in a hurry, half an hour, but ideally an hour. Somewhere nice and warm. So the batter is resting. My bubble a little bit, which is very nice. And then keep the side tidy like so. And that's got to rest now for a good hour. Just cover it with a cloth, somewhere nice and warm. Here we go, let's see what's happened later. Okay, so, look at this. That's been rested. Smell delicious, bubbly away, nice color. I'm excited already. So now I'm gonna do is to beat my egg white nice and stiff. Got my two egg white from earlier. Get a good whisk and beat it up. Eggs are nice and stiff. The test is over your head. Hopefully, it's fine. Look, <laughs> good. So now I need to fold this beautiful egg into the batter. I'm going to put a tiny bit of eggs first into the mixture and just fold it gently. Look at this. Beautiful. And do it very gently. And fold the rest in. I'm hungry. But look at how light that mixture is now. Beautiful. Don't overmix it. Don't worry about little lumps. They will disappear. That's it. And what I do, I leave it rest for about 15 minutes now. So we just relax before we start cooking them. Here we go. Batter is perfect now. Nice, bubbly, and nice and light. First thing, get the pans on. I got some beautiful little blinis pan in here. So you want them nice and hot, but not, not too hot. You don't want to burn the mixture. So, medium heat. So you can buy those little pans anywhere, kitchen shop or something else. So nice and hot. Perfect. 
Now the trick, trick number one, how to grease your pan. Now you can get some spray and so on, but my grandmother's trick was always, when she used to make pancake or crepes in, um, in Brittany, was half a potato, little fork inside, and then dip in oil. And that will give you the nice coverage on your pan. Grease the pan. Look at this. That will give you the perfect coverage, just enough fat in your pan, like so. So if you have potatoes, you can use a bit of a kitchen cloth or something like that. It will work the same treat. You need a little palette knife also. This will help to turn the blinis over. Okay, let's do it. So, nice ladle of butter in my little pan. Oh yes. You can see it bubbling already. Super light butter. Look at those bubbles there. You can see changing color just around there. So I know they start to be cooked on the leaf and then we can flick them over. You can just see, see the batter changing color around. Tip it over. And that's a typical blinis texture there. They don't take more than a minute, very, very quick. Oh, I'm so hungry. Mm -hmm. So the blini will be so light inside not heavy or dense, it's like some can be sometimes. This one would be absolutely delicious. Et voilà. Number one done. And my second one. And they're ready for the next batch. So again, dip your potatoes in your oil. Nice and sizzly. Great fun. Now the beauty with those blinis is you can make lots of them in advance and you can freeze them. They freeze very well. So you don't do it all at the last minute, especially if you do a dinner party or something like that. Let's make a great starter. Sorry, I can't wait. Mm. It's impossible to resist. Mm. So light. So as I said, you don't have to use this little pan there if you don't have them. Just use a normal frying pan. Doesn't matter, non-stick one is great. I've got flat pan in here that I use at home for making crepe, but I grease the pan the same way with my potato. Everywhere, that's good. And look what I found. <laughs> it's Valentine's, isn't it? Put this on the middle. So it's well greased on the inside also. And put a tiny bit of butter inside. Don't overfill it. That's enough there. I'm going to show you to make some tiny little one also. Not too much. So you do it with a ladle or a spoon, but if you want, um, you can use a little squeezy bottle and just squeeze the mixture into your pan. That's quite good fun. So they cook a bit faster, this one, because they are thinner. You can see the bubble appearing now. We're good. Tip the over. So this one, I've turned it a bit too early, you see? It's just a bit light there. So watch the bubble on top. The more bubble on top, the more they bake on the leaf. So that should be ready. That's better. Let's see if my heart works. Come on, don't stick, please. Don't break my heart. Oh, that's good, isn't it, this one? Don't break my heart. <laughs> So cheesy. Come on, yeah. Look at this. Beautiful. Gonna make somebody very happy with this one. Well, it's breakfast time, isn't it? So. Mm. So now it's time to put the blini together. Blini's done. I got some beautiful smoked salmon. Smoked salmon, of course. It's uh, very romantic, I think. So, a slice some very thin. Make sure it's thin. You don't want your salmon to be too thick. There we go. Beautiful. Nice blini. That's the perfect size for a starter or for breakfast. Put a warm blini on your plate and get your salmon. And just fold it gently there. Just give it a bit of height. Don't put too much. Just fold the slice. Just like that. And put a tiny bit of creme fraiche on top, just, just there. And to really push the board to win a heart. 
and a tiny bit of caviar on top. Just fish eggs, caviar, don't buy the expensive one. And then a lot of deal with it. Just a little spray of it. Here we go. If you don't win half with that, I don't know what will. But beautiful bloody. Little zest of lemon. Breakfast is ready. I love smoked salmon, but you don't have to use smoked salmon. You can put some avocado. Works very well with it. Mushroom, grilled mushroom on top. Works fine too. Just a blini is really a good, um, a good carrier for so many things. So here it is, my buckwheat blini with smoked salmon. Well, I enjoy making it. I hope your lover will love it too. So I'm back to bed now. Goodbye. Mm. Bon appétit.